And with the press of the big red button, welcome to <coughs> my mortuary, because I may possibly be dead as I'm doing this. Excuse me. <coughs> I won't do that much, but I apologize. It's going to happen. I believe I am in, I don't believe I am, I know that I am in the last days of Omicron. <laughs> the symptoms started Saturday night, and they're good for four or five days. <laughs> Thank you, back channel. I have all kinds of chemistry going on, and I, I, I sound like I'm entering puberty if I talk like this. It doesn't help much. My voice just lives and cracks, and oh, well. We'll make the best of it because we have cool things to do today. This is January 7th, 2022. That makes it the first Friday of 2022 and therefore the first drama of 2022, right? Gentle hail. <laughs> I sound like lava smacking the roof of a tin cardboard shack. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. But today is too important to have bailed on because I just got such cool and awesome things to do with everybody today. Really, uh, really, let's just go with that. So I am David Rush, uh, your erstwhile host, senior instructor at Total Seminars. This is an Ask Me Anything. It's David Rush, Ask Me Anything, and Scott. Scott Jernigan is with us. Uh, working the back channel right now. I saw him just before the show. He looks uh, just as handsome as can be. So uh, who knows? He may pop on here, especially to <clears throat> save the day if necessary, because I can't talk anymore. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I already lost track of my notes. And this thing is, I'm not foggy anymore. I was foggy for a couple of days, but uh, I'm well rested and everything is going just fine. Just got to get rid of this damn dry throat. I didn't say dang. Anyway, we get together uh, every Friday and for two hours at two o'clock central time on this channel, the Total Seminars Mike Myers channel. We talk about Raspberry Pis. We talk about CompTIA certifications. We talk about anything technical. Uh, we try and put the, the, uh, the two of those things together. Let's use uh, Raspberry Pis to help out our studies in CompTIA certifications, but we go above and beyond that by far and away. Our bailiwick. Uh, tends to be A plus, network plus, security plus, IT fundamentals plus, but we'll go uh, into other certifications and other technologies if you are so inclined. If I know something about it, I will spew forth what what little I do know. And if I don't know anything about it, I'll tell you about it and either tell you that I'm never going to be able to answer that, you're on your own for research, or I'll take it on as my own research project. <clears throat> Scott Jernigan, work in the background. He is the senior editor for Total Seminars, author, co-author, editor-in-chief, I think is his official title there, uh, deep sea diver, animal rights activist, certified gemologist with the Gemological Institute of Armenia, and, you know, just an all-around jolly fellow. So he's looking for your comments. He's looking for you to beg for him to come on screen and save the day. <laughs> but otherwise, he's doing his thing in the background. He's helping me answer questions. Uh, he's posting stuff in the uh, the YouTube feed, banning those ne'er-do-wells who occasionally pop up and just start spewing their own garbage that has nothing to do with our show. So, and by the way, you're welcome to put stuff up that has nothing to do with our show, just nothing weird or cursive or <laughs> so you get the idea. And speaking of that, since the best way to communicate with us for the next two hours is on the chat channel. If you're watching the chat channel, you might want to toggle timestamps on it so you can see where I'm at answering questions. I'll say, uh, oh, looking at time mark 115, Fred has the following question. And now if you've posted before uh, 115 and you didn't get a response, then you know I missed your question. Post it again. And if you posted your question after 115, I haven't gotten to it yet, so I will. <clears throat> no need to post it again until I miss it. Uh, I also saw working the back channel, Andrew Hutz is here, used to be a, uh, just a, uh, not just a, uh, but one of the, the watching participants of the show, he joined the company, and now he works the back channel and the front channel and all kinds of other goodies, he's uh, a writer in his own right, a very strong writer, he's got a great blog on security topics and hacking and things like that, I'll give you a link for that a little while later on, 
So what are we doing here? We're here to advance our technical learning while isolated during the COVID virus. And as you may be able to tell from my voice, I have joined the Rona Club. It's Omicron. And uh, it was mild, you know, for a, a fat guy. I, that puts me in the, uh, the at-risk thing, right? So I've always, I, I, I always knew, right? You cannot escape this virus. It gets everybody. I have 14 inoculations, and I've lived in a bubble for eight years. You're going to get it. So I always knew I was going to get it. I'm reasonably careful, and I've, I've definitely amped up my, uh, my uh, <laughs> approach to avoiding corona, wearing 14 masks now, and doing all that good stuff. But uh, my missus had the first symptom. I got it a couple of minutes after that, and about four days after that. Our kid who's home from school, he got it. He's going to go back to school with a, a good cough. But, you know, it wasn't so bad that it hospitalized me. Just a bad cough for five or six days. And <clears throat> that's fading. The first three days were just beyond painful and uncomfortable. Now I just sound bad, but it doesn't hurt anymore. <clears throat> so we press ever onward. And this is, if you're counting, or if you're not, I'll count for you, the 74th in a series of our weekly dramas to show off use of Raspberry Pi and studies and real world creations. It's a presentation of Total Seminars, Mike Myers, and the whole crew. Uh, we do AMAs three times a week. Mike does Monday and Wednesday for an hour or so, sometimes longer, and then he gives me two hours here to make it all even, so I get my two hours. <clears throat> And we do call it dramas because it's Dave Rush, AMA, and Scott. Oh, all right, enough of that. Let's just see what's going on, who's here, and who's having fun. We'll come back and visit that stuff later. Oh, look at all, lots of people poking in here. So Tullawit, of course, in at 1.06 p.m. Oh, that wasn't a, an overnight post from last night. I work late into the night working on everything, company work, personal work prepping the show, whatever. And of course, late in the night for me is mid-afternoon for Tullowit. So I'm always seeing him and communicating with him and a couple of other folks on the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. <clears throat> and usually about the time I go to bed, midnight, one, two o'clock in the morning, I say goodnight. And next thing I know, I come up in the morning and Tullowit has had at that time when I went to bed at two o'clock in the morning, posted the first message <laughs> on two here. So I'm looking at, okay, 106. Hey, it was up at one o'clock in the morning. That's my time. But no, this was just today. So I got a fever and the only <laughs> cure is more drama. All right. Boy, just think of the memes when he passes away. I'm going to miss him. <clears throat> Not you, Tullowit. Will Shaw's here. Everybody's favorite Delta jock. Wilson's back. Nice to see you, my friend. And Will thinks he's ready for today at 153. Got YouTube cranked on his pie. He's got Windows 8.1. What are you doing? That's that's the kind of crap that runs a an ERJ, for goodness sake. With 8.1 on a real computer and the real system, you're nuts. <laughs> Anyways, he's SSH into the pie, and so let's do this. <clears throat> that sounds good. I can actually do that. Uh, David, once this starts briefly what's the workaround to get the drm content say on udemy to play with widevine plugin so i i took that question down i wrote it down the other day when you asked it and said i would give you the answer and i forgot the question i lost it in a, in a, in a reboot so i'm going to repost that right here in my handy dandy little daily notes there it goes <clears throat> and i will answer that question in uh discord after this i know you got an account there so if i don't see you online when i do it i'll uh, dm it to you and i will have that answer for you and plugins with recipe in 10 uh recipe 11 or 32-bit operating systems okay so just make sure that we're all singing for the same hymnal raspy is gone it was replaced by raspberry pi os <clears throat> uh, it defaults as a 32-bit operating system there is a beta for 64 bits, it's, it's in a hidden area and I'll share that with you as well, since I see your references here at the, uh, everybody where you can get the 64 bit. It's 96% uh, functional. There's a couple 
niche things that don't work. And so for some people, they can't use the 64, but uh, for a lot of folks, everything will work. And that would include uh, the wide vine uh, DRM issue. So uh, apologies that I don't have that for you, Will. I will have that for you today in uh, Discord and or I've got your email address from earlier communications. I will gladly send that to you. And I'm sorry I didn't have it. But you had another comment that intrigued me here. At 158, I gave up earlier in the week and just watched what I needed on my CentOS system. Okay, why are you still using CentOS? They killed themselves this week. CentOS ceased to exist. There are 400 tutorials out there on how to migrate from CentOS to Alma Linux, which is the downstream, one of the two downstream replacements for it. So say bye-bye to CentOS. And hello to Fedora, which is upstream, <clears throat> Alma Linux, which is downstream, or Rocky Linux, which is downstream. Big fan of Rocky here, not surprisingly, because they made a port of it that runs on Raspberry Pi. It runs beautifully. I've been doing all my Linux Plus courses on Rocky and Ubuntu <laughs> and about five different distros, trying it on all of them. But say bye-bye to CentOS. <clears throat> And Scott Jernigan is here, posted at 158. I don't know if you know this, right? I can't send you a message. You can't send me a message unless we have posted on here somewhere. So I could be sitting here watching all day long and I'm logged in. But if you try to at me, uh, it won't happen because I haven't posted yet. But as soon as I post, my account becomes available to receive ats. TD Washington's here. Sahil is here. Hello, Sahil. Nice to see you, sir. <clears throat> Hilo, no, no, that's H-I-L-O, Master 19. It's a little community in Hawaii. <laughs> or, you know, maybe you fly choppers, those things that try to blow themselves apart. Andrew is here, as we knew. And words in Cyrillic. Now, fortunately, we have someone here who reads Cyrillic and speaks Russian. So if there's anything that I need to know, O translator, who we know, who knows what I'm talking about, fill me in. Otherwise, ver fi. I'm going to presume that that is a greeting. Somali's here. Hi, everyone. Uh, got your stuff. I communicated with you that I got your stuff and, and sent it off. By the way, anybody who's watching. Oh, thank you, Bat Channel. Good to know. <clears throat> um, anybody who has won a CompTIA voucher in the last three to four weeks, They've all been submitted to uh, CompTIA, who has been on vacation, and my contact there is on vacation through today. So I think that everything that I've sent in the last three to four weeks is piled up in a lovely email thing. And when they get back in the office on Monday morning, my guess is the first thing they do is they start catching up on CompTIA business. And then when they get a breather, then they look and see, oh, look, Dave has sent 12 to 16 entries. I got to get on that too. So I, I sent to everybody who, whose stuff I got that I received their messages and you can expect delays from the holidays. Well, it's true. There are delays from the holidays. All right, what do we got here then? Tell we did the same last night. YouTube erased it. Okay, that's why. Ah, thank you, Scott, for taking care of that. Uh, David Mueller at 208. Huzzah! Hello, everyone. I love Huzzah. JM, JM, you never come in and say, hi, how you doing? You just blast right in with the tech question of the week that leaves us all staggered. <laughs> so, all right, I'll take a whack at it. Uh, in a local museum, sorry, scratch my eye, <clears throat> in a local area network, does it matter if I connect a server, not a DNS server, directly to the router or is it best practice to connect a server to a switch for network segmentation? Well, if you plug in a server into a router, the server will be able to connect to the internet. And if you invoke, we're gonna presume that you're using a, you're talking about a Soho router, but if it's a Soho router, router, then in order for anybody to access that server, they would have to, okay, thank you, back channel. Um, hey, back channel, fill in, uh, Andrew Hutz, if you would, and, and let him know what needs done. Thank you. 
Uh, so basically what I'm telling you here is you're going to have one box that's connected to the internet and whether or not then you'll be able to connect to it depends on if it's a traditional router or a NAT router. And, you know, you can always fix that with port forwarding. So no, we don't uh, hook up to a, through a switch just for the sake of segmentation. We hook up because you want to have more than one device share the connection with the router. Does that make sense? That should be a complete answer, but uh, if it's not, if I, if I haven't given you enough information, uh, flesh out your question just a little bit, please. Thanks. Hey, Thomas Cole's here, laughing out loud, at probably my poor voice. <clears throat> By the way, folks, um, if you're trying to get in contact with Scott, he'll be back. He has to go run an errand, and Andrew is now fully in control of the back channel and the ban hammer. <clears throat> Ah, thank you, Tolowit. Your links have no power here. <laughs> I use Linux Mint with Cinnamon. Okay. I like both. They're, they're good operating systems. They're great as transitional operating systems and desktops because they are so Windows-like. So very good. Uh, you'll be on Discord. I'll explain myself with 8.1 and CentOS. You know, when you see them listed like that, the explanation is obvious. You are an antiquer. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tolowit. Uh, yeah, the, the Ruski poster. Jeremy Parker was is here, and he said something and changed his mind. So, Jeremy Parker, I can't unretract your message. Oh, there we go. Hello, Dave. Ping is here. Hello. I love that Ping says hello. Somebody should have an account named hello and just put ping in and accomplish the same thing, right? <laughs> yes, I still crack myself up, even as bad as I sound right now. Oh, thank you, Tellaway, at uh, 214. Just for fun, says Master19 at 215. What drink are you drinking? I have, I made... Some tea. I did not make tea. My missus made tea two weeks ago, just before the show. And uh, it was lovely and it was warm. And we made sun tea, iced tea with uh, keto sweetener and lemon. And then it stayed warm for a week or so here. I was able to drink tea during last week's show because it was warm. Uh, and then the cold hit this week. It's nice and cold here, but for the sake of lemon and sweetener and <clears throat> tea, I'm trying to use this to turn my voice into something tolerable. Now I'm going to do something really horrible. I apologize. I'm going to put a cough drop in and uh, chew on that. You'll see me chewing and crunching as it goes and I'll sound stupid. I'm sorry, but we're going to chalk it up to medical necessity. Abu Bakr al Haj, my friend. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. I am well, Ping, and yourself. <clears throat> Rocking hot. <laughs> no, I don't drink apple juice. I like apple juice. I don't. I bought a uh, a thing of orange juice this week because, you know, it's an old tradition. You got to drink orange juice when you have cold-like symptoms. And I haven't been able to bring myself to open it. I've been really, really good about this diet. No sugar. And it's, you know, helping all kinds of things. I don't know if I'm actually losing weight, but I am fixing myself in other areas. And I it's so bad for me on all these good things that I'm trying to do that I haven't been able to break it open. I, in fact, we bought it uh, to celebrate New Year's morning with mimosas. <laughs> and I did cheat. I had a little champagne this week, uh, but I couldn't make mimosas out of it because it's such a cheat. Uh, what does threat intelligence and source mean? Okay, well, threat intelligence is, uh, it comes from a couple of different flavors. Threat intelligence says somehow, I have learned the existence of a threat. Now that comes from all kinds of specific sources, but the, the global one that you're talking about here is there is actually an organization out there. I don't recall its official name. You can look it up in our 601 materials, uh, but their job is to collect and disseminate information to their members and to the public and to, to companies and government agencies and things like that the existence of current and new threats. And if we just summarize the whole thing, the gathering of 
information that identifies the existence of a threat is threat intelligence. And then the source is included within that, excuse me. <clears throat> so where is this threat coming from? It's not just the fact that it's a, uh, you know, some generic threat that uh, your data could be exposed by this new virus called want to die, whatever. I just made that up. Uh, so with source under threat intelligence, they don't keep it vague like that. They keep it specific. Here's what it is. Here's everything we know about it. Here's any corrective measures that have been made aware. Here are some facts about uh, entities that have been affected by it. So it's, it's, a, it's a broad term. It does get used in Security Plus, but it's basically definitional. There's not a lot of, of area to fill out in that other than uh, a company has received threat intelligence that such and such could be happening. Which of the following is the first step that they should take now that they know about this? And, you know, you get a list of four things that you might want to do to mitigate or prevent or what are the other, they perform any of the other steps that we do for managing risk. What's the best thing? What is the best software to use for online security? Ping? Nobody has an answer to that. Mike and I did a show one time on anti-malware. Let me see how quick I can find that. And if I can, I will post it as a link. And, and here we discuss some pros and cons of popular, okay, Stream Index 2020. <clears throat> Uh, of popular anti-malwares and, you know, what we like about them, what we don't. But, you know, we're just two guys with opinions. So the stuff we liked, uh, not everybody does. And we didn't always agree on everything in there. All right, hang on. I got to do the search term in here. That was malware. Searching 14 results. There we go. Feature anti-malware tools. I've got it. <laughs> so we did this on April 20th of 2020. It wasn't even 2021. <clears throat> but I'm going to post this link right now for you ping and this was a show again an ama that was on mike's show that we did and i posted that at time mark 222 take a look at that see what you can learn from it <clears throat> excuse me and then uh if you don't get a good answer for that you need some more information uh either catch me or mike again on our next show or catch me on discord later today Jam. Yep. Makes sense. Also, what's the difference between a termination point, like a 66 or 110 block and a switch? What? And is a patch the same as a switch? Shame on you. What? You're, you're not asking me that. That you're, you're trolling me with that question. Um, a switch is an intelligent box. I just put one away here. I did some post Christmas cleanup here. And I had a switch in another part of the house that I didn't need. So, hey, I just happened to have one right here, convenient. So here is a switch. They come in all sizes, shapes, and <clears throat> extra functions and things like that. But a switch is a distribution tool to allow to enable multiple computers to be connected together and communicate with one another. I'm not gonna get into the whole theory and operation of a switch right now. That's a, you know, we've done 14 episodes on that between my show and Mike's. Uh, just go to our YouTube archive channel and look up uh, switch. Uh, a termination point is where wires get connected together. So a 66 punch down or a 110 punch down, uh, that says I got, uh, an Ethernet run that comes out to eight bare wires here, and I got another run that's got eight bare wires on this end. Well, you can't just twist them together. So we use punch down blocks to punch the wires into, and then the internals of the punch down block will get those wires internally connected and linked together. So those are used to connect cables. Sometimes the cable on one side is a short little patch cable, it goes to a patch panel or it goes to a switch. And then the other one is typically a long run that goes to a wall jack, something like that. But there's no electronics in a, uh, in a punch down block. And so a patch panel, a patch cable is a patch. 
See, patch is a loose word, doesn't mean anything. There are patch cables, there are patch panels. Uh, think as patch as wiring link. So there are patch cables. They tend to have an RJ45 on either end of it. So I could take one end of a patch cable, plug it into here, and the other end into uh, a patch bay down here, into another switch, into a router. That's the, that's the area I think you're going in, the direction I think you're going in. There's other things that have to do with patch, but based on the context of your other questions, that seems to be what you need to know. Ask more if you need. Jeremy Parker, they have new release for Mint. Oh, there's always a new release coming out for every distro. Mint gets uh, revved at least twice a year. David Mueller, open web application security project question mark i'm going to need some <laughs> some more words around that i don't know how to turn that into a question open web application security project question mark sorry <laughs> fill that one out for me good sahil can you please tell our ctfs different than real life job in cybersecurity field uh of course they're different but you know, what's a CTF? A CTF is an opportunity to practice a skill in a competitive situation. CTF, everybody, is a capture the flag. It is an attempt uh, to, well, you remember the old capture the flag that we used to play as kids in, in the dark, right? So somebody's got to protect the flag on the hill. You got one on either hill and you break up into teams and you literally go and try and break through the other team's security, capture their flag and bring it home. Well, there are security versions of that and online where uh you've got to break through my security and get to my secret and uh steal my data that's a, a capture the flag in here so yeah capture the flags are great for practicing those skills um what there is no legitimate job outside of dark agency government works that will conduct a capture the flag like they are in these competitions. I'm trying to be real careful here. <laughs> that's, that's done in the same way, right? That there are teams of programmers and, and hackers in certain agencies, again, secretive, and it, it may or may not be legal, but that's their thing, not ours, uh, who have been assigned a task go and break through the security of this nuclear power uh, control system and infect it or take their data or whatever but regular joe schmo companies and organizations and things like that no and maybe contract companies yeah but again there's there's similarities basically and as far as real world goes and well, no, the similarity is you will use the same techniques to accomplish goals and to try to penetrate security and things like that. So uh, here's a, a capture the flag contest. I use this skill to get through here. Now I'm a pen tester. I'm working for a pen testing company. And one of my challenges is to access certain pieces of data. I will certainly use some of the skills that are used in competitive CTFs. So there are some similarities there. <clears throat> hey, Andrew, would you be so kind as to post both the specials and the uh, Discord link? We'll get that out of the way here. How are we doing here? It's 28. I got things to do with you. I'm just about caught up on questions, I think. <clears throat> all right. Uh, 223, Linda Wynn is here. Happy Friday, all. Is that switch managed? That particular switch was not a managed switch. They do have managed switches around here, but that was just a, a dumb old gigabit switch. I did manage to put it on the floor. Does that count? <laughs> okay, Andrew is posting up uh, some stuff at 229. I'm going to throw a slide up for that, then I'm going to go get into my notes for a couple of minutes. I'll come back and do more questions after that. Andrew's got two links at 229 up. And I will share those links with you by a slide. Oh, I guess I didn't do this too. 
Let's do a bunch of slide shares and get them all out of the way. We're right now. We go to this thing and this thing. <clears throat> all right. So first and foremost, if you want to contact us, myself, uh, Scott, Andrew, outside of this uh, forum today, you can always do so by email. Catch me. Uh, I work for Total Seminars. Our website is totalsem.com. I am Dave Rush or Dave R. And so you can catch me, Dave R at totalsem.com. Likewise, Scott Jernigan, Scott J at totalsem.com. And Andrew is Andrew Hutz, Andrew H at totalsem.com. You can also catch me on my personal email, drushtx at Yahoo. And there's other contact information on this page that if you're interested in, just pause this, the uh, live stream or catch it in an archive and copy it then. You can also, Andrew, put up the, uh, the Pi R Square link. I create, whenever we have a project show, like today, uh, documentation on everything that I use for the project and most of the things that I use for the show, including all these slides. So if you would like to uh, hit up and, and get a copy of those documents, you can just, uh, I turn my server on every Friday before we start the show and I run it through the weekend. I'm getting more and more comfortable leaving it up full time, but I'm still not there yet. Perfect. Andrew posted this link at seven at 2.30, 7.20. Where'd that come from? But it's pirsquare.zapto.org, P-I-R-S-Q-U-A-R-E, pi, pi R squared, Zapto. I know I didn't pick that. It's because it was a domain that came with a, <clears throat> a free DNS service that I use. And the site is secure. I just put new batteries in this mouse and it's really slow. I think they were used batteries. We got specials posted at 229 just for anybody who uh, watches and participate in Mike's AMAs and my AMAs. 50% off bundles that are made of an ebook and a matching total tester. So we got them for A plus and Net plus and Sec plus and all these other ones that you see listed here. Just go to the Total Sem website, go load up your basket with loot. And then when you check out, Use the code 2022. I went for the obvious one this week. And you will get 50% off of the, those bundled items that you put in there. You got to buy the two items together. Basically, you're getting two for one. They basically cost about the same as each other. Heck of a deal because they're really, they started out cheap. And so when you pick them up, um, I've mentioned in the past, I'll do this later, but I don't want to bring up the slide again. This is the uh, current Linux Plus course that i'm taking on udemy i've become utterly and totally disenchanted with it because of presentation and execution problems but most of the information in there is good and usable so i am marching through it and in the meantime i'm uh taking and creating notes that will make them useful for others so you're welcome to, to sign up for the thing there's one more uh a ten dollar Udemy sale that ends today. You can pick this thing up for 10 bucks and we can follow it along together if you're interested. And if you run into problems with it and you will, as long as I'm ahead of you, I can get them fixed for you. I have everything that he's got problems with in corrected notes. Got to figure out the legality of how and when I can post those notes, but we'll get there. Uh, what's this? All right, enough of that stuff. I got a couple more of these that we can get to later. So on then, back to my handy dandy notes, which are over here. Okay, we did discounts. Oh, the Discord channel. I do need to finish sharing that. Stand by. Share screen. Andrew posted at 229, the link to the unofficial Discord channel. There it is. <clears throat> so we don't run Total Seminars, their own Discord channel, but our friend Jose Braden did set up an unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel that has over 500 participants on it now. I think I maybe saw 550 the other day. 
and it just continues to grow. And you can join us. Uh, we get there with masks and, and with masks. I guess I am still a little foggy <clears throat> with uh, mics and cameras uh, after these AMAs. And we're on there all the time for text. And you can you know, do a face-to-face with you want anytime with anybody there. Uh, I'll be on Discord after the show today. Today's link is this one. Andrew has posted it at 229. And hope you'll join us. We got a, a billion things going on there. We talk about all kinds of topics. We've got all kinds of subtopic forums. Uh, and we just get together and, and shoot the breeze after these AMAs and talk about whatever comes up. You want to flesh out some more information from the AMA? That's a great time and place to do it because we can have a real conversational give and take. Uh, and the conversations go everywhere from recipes to cat grooming to whatever you got in mind. I hope you'll join us. Anything else here that I wanted to share just in case? Nah. <laughs> Switching back to notes. There we go. Uh, okay, so today we are going to do a project today. It's a really quick one. should take 10 minutes, 15 if I drag it out. Uh, We'll do it on Raspberry Pi, but I always point out whether or not you need a Raspberry Pi for our project of the day. You do not need one for today. There is one command that will be different for certain different distros, and you may have to look it up on yours. I'll explain that when I get there, but uh, everything I'm doing today works really well on all Debian distros. So Ubuntu and Debian and Mint and Raspberry Pi OS and so forth. It's a fun project. It's a, a the project is called Hardening SSH with Banners. It's a cool sounding title and it's terms that as you pursue certifications, if you don't already know them, you will need to learn them. And so today we're gonna to teach them to you. Last week was our New Year's Eve show, last show of 2021. And mostly all we did was take questions, uh, talk general purpose technology. And of course we held a contest for a CompTIA exam voucher. We'll be doing that again today and more. So what are we doing today? This being the first drama of 2022, keeping it simple. It's a fun, simple project. We'll harden SSA servers with banners. I have a uh, tutorial that I borrowed from. It's not, I guess I, I did a little modification on it, not much. Uh, Andrew, if you would be so kind as to post the tutorial link, that would be great. <clears throat> Scott is, uh, Scott, <laughs> congratulations. You have been elevated to Scott-isms, Andrew. <laughs> and what is the current time? It's 2.37. He's going to post that at 2.37. Sorry, I super scrolled. Got to fix that. Oh, what are you doing there? And again, if, uh, if it all goes too fast, you have any problems or issues, it's all documented in my archive documents that you can get from pirsquare.zapto.org. You'll see a downloads link near the top of the page. And then thank you, back channel, posted at 237. Uh, and then all of my archive documents that I used for every show in the last 74 episodes, minus a couple, because they weren't at projects, are there. All right. Uh, Enough of all the intro stuff I love. Now we get into the stuff that I find fun and interesting. It's not necessarily tied to the show. Space news. I got two space newses today. Uh, I hope on Tuesday, actually Sunday night and Monday night, uh, that you got a chance to do some stargazing. The Quadrantids, which is one of the three best meteor shows of the year, uh, was going on by midnight my time. It was peaking. and. It is the best show that I have seen in 15 years. It was great. There were there was 200 plus meteors per hour on that thing. We were getting three and four a minute. Uh, obviously, with all meteor showers these days, lots of little just you know flashes of light here and there, and you catch them out of the corner of your eye. But there's so many that if you just focused on one area, you'd eventually see a long streamer. A long streamer. It was a great, great show. <clears throat> All right, other space news. If you want to track the new web 
telescope, Webb Space Telescope in real time. Got an awesome link for you. Somebody sent it to me last night and I just, I, I, <laughs> I'm trying to study and that was something that distracted me. I mostly don't get distracted. Andrew, would you be so kind as to post the track web in real time link? It's a, uh, the link starts jwst.nasa.gov. I'll throw that here. There it is. Track, share. Because I'm just a geek for space. Love this stuff. I assume that you guys are all geeky, cool bananas. Telescope posted at 240, says Andrew. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's just an awesome link. NASA.gov, content, whack web launch, whack whereisweb.html. Simple, easy to follow link. <clears throat> Easy-ish, anyways. Okay, now more interesting news of the day. We are adding a new giveaway to drama. Interesting thing happens. I've had on my list of things to do for a few weeks. Uh, ask Mike if I can do another giveaway. And I hadn't gotten around to it. You know, how and when we communicate with Mike is <clears throat> fraught with he's busy and I'm busy and everybody else is busy. Uh, but I, I found a a loophole the other day on Monday, Mike had to run a short show and he didn't get around to uh, doing a total tester online giveaway. So I sent him a, a message a couple of days ago or called, I talked to him the other day and said, Hey, you didn't get around to doing that. Can I give away your uh, TTO on my show? And he said, are you not giving away TTOs every week? And I said, no, nobody ever told me I could. And I haven't asked. Do it, man. You should be giving one away every week. So we're going to have two giveaways every week for the foreseeable future. Now we'll still do a CompTIA exam voucher. And we're going to give away total tester access, 90 day total access to uh, total tester access to any of the, the tester programs that we have. So all the trifecta and many, many more. You can run through that list. So I'll be doing that giveaway later today. It's exciting. I'm making headway on my Linux Plus course. I did that. As always, we'll have an exam contest today. I'm not doing that. Research archive is up. Cool. Old unanswered questions. I just have the one from Will. I will get that taken care of him tonight. Uh, let's see. I have posted all the, uh, the friend of show links. I got way too many up there. So I'm going to let that go for now. Let us... Do a contest. We'll do our first contest right now. Yeah, it's cool. It's 42. And uh, then I'll answer questions. Then we'll get on the project. And then we'll do the, uh, the voucher contest and answer questions for the rest of the day and call it a day. Hmm. I know, crunching ice, but cools my throat. So deal with it. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to do a contest to give away. 90 day access to our total tester online practice test package. We have practice test packages for almost anything you can imagine as far as certifications go that I, I'm trying to think of with, there might even be a Linux plus one in there. I'm almost certain that there is. <clears throat> the rules of today's contest are simple. These are gonna be different rules than uh, other contests that we've done in the past. So pay attention. And Andrew, you're going to want to have ready the how to claim for total tester, not the voucher one, uh, ready to post when the contest is over. The, the general rules here is today is going to be a multiple choice question. I'll give you a little bit of background on it. You can only enter one answer to today. If you answer, if you put in more than one, I'm going to ignore the subsequent ones. Previous winners of any prize on Mike's show or mine, including vouchers, are eligible. If you've already won Total Tester, if you already won a voucher, you can win another one today. The question today is multiple choice. It will have an A, B, C, D choice. Don't type in A, B, C, or D. You must type in the textual answer to the question. All right. Uh, this is a sec plus question. It's not from Total Tester. It's one that I created. Um, you know, if you're not a, a studying Security Plus and you don't know the answer, 
That's all right. You got four opportunities to guess it. <clears throat> and I'll keep them simpler again in the future, but I picked this one on purpose. I wrote this question on purpose because it's going to dovetail with today's project. So let me, oh, that's what I did wrong. I spelled <laughs> resource with, no, I was right. That's, I spelled that right. <clears throat> All right, let me put this slide up with the question. Random show track, TTO question, come up there, you. All right, so here's today's questions. In Security Plus, which is what I mean by when I say in terms of Security Plus, we have categories of controls to protect resources. There's all kinds of different security controls that we talk about in Security Plus that are designed to protect resources. What is the name of the type of control that can actually stop unauthorized access of a resource? You have four choices. Don't put in A, B, C, or D. Write in your answer writing one answer only, authorization control, blockage control, administrative control, or preventative control. A control that can actually stop unauthorized access is which of these four things, authorization control, blockage control, administrative control, or preventive control. I'm gonna leave that up there. Andrew, be watching the uh, your feed. I'm gonna be watching my feed and we'll... Uh, you have the answer on the back channel. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just watching, looking for answers. There we go, they're starting to come in now. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Myers. <laughs> JM, you know, I got all of it on top still, buddy. Wow. Okay, looking for here. So what I'm gathering from this is nobody is, you're all putting in the same guess. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking if everybody puts this in, okay, I guess there's some validity to that. Maybe yours would turn up first on my feed than yours. Um, so I will tell you what Andrew has also discovered. We do not yet have a correct answer up there. <clears throat> So for everybody who has uh, copied each other on some of those ones, Peter Hunt is the last person that I, uh, I, I see an entry for and nobody above Peter Hunt <clears throat> has yet to put in the right answer. <laughs> I'm gonna wait here till somebody comes up with one. Mark Wheeler, did you hear me say nobody got it right yet? And so you put one of the ones that was already posted up there. <laughs> eh, we got one. We got two. Yes, that's what I see. Right. I, I, I agree with you, back channel. And I think they have both been winners in the past, so I'm not going to wait one more heavily to the other one. It is a hard question and I'll talk about the answer for that one. <clears throat> All right, I do have a winner though. Give me a second to update my uh, appropriate paperwork here so I can take care of more later. Voucher winner is this person, save that. Okay, I can do all that other junk later. <clears throat> All right, the answer to the question is administer, I'm sorry, is preventative control. If you can stop something, you can prevent it, right? So authorization control, no such thing. I made that term up. Blockage control, no such thing. I made that term up. Administrative control. An administrative control is a policy. So let's say you have a policy that says, no one can use our computers to go to eBay during work hours. Now, will that sentence stop somebody from going to eBay during work hours on company computers? It will not. That's something that you're expected to follow the rule, but there is nothing in those words that stops somebody from doing it. Afterward, when we discover they've done it, then we can have a little meeting and say, here's why you don't work here anymore or whatever. So a preventative control is something like a guard or a gate 
or a lock on a door. That actually prevents somebody from doing something. Does that make sense? And there's all kinds of other, there's, uh, <clears throat> wow, there's compensating controls and things like that. I, I think this is great. I love that I did this question and I was kind of betting that this was gonna happen. I won the bet to myself. I just made a million dollars. For those of you who have not yet started studying Security Plus, but you will, this is gonna be the first and most important factoid that you will have learned and you will never forget it. A preventative control is something that stops you from being able to accomplish something. It's a barrier, right? So good. Our winner at 237, 247. Uh, there was a tie at the time, but uh, Tullowit, your name came up before David Zentera. So Tullowit, uh, Andrew's going to post the how to claim your access. Basically, you're going to send me an email with three pieces of information in the body of the email, your actual name, your YouTube name, and the Total tester access, a total tester online package that you want. Send that to Dave R at totalsem.com. That will get to me. I will collect, uh, add it to this week's winners. There was uh, only one other winner this week on Wednesday. I got their information. So as soon as I get yours, I will submit it to the appropriate powers that be, and they will generate uh, an access license for you and email you how to get your questions, how to get your practice tests. So very cool. Thanks, guys. I'm sorry. I, you know, I knew there was also a danger in, in picking up a topic that we don't regularly deal with much in this class. And so uh, for future ones, those questions will be a little more uh, accessible uh, as far as knowledge goes to everybody who participates. So congratulations on that. It was a hard question. <laughs> Mark, oops. <laughs> Currently, currently learning Sec Plus says David Mueller. So good. You've, you've already got one down that you will never miss this question when you get to a CompT exam. JM at 249, an IPS would be an example of that type of control. So an intrusion prevention system. So I saw this question get posted elsewhere on a, somebody's Discord channel. I don't remember if it was the unofficial Discord channel or someplace else. And I kept silent on that question because there was a there was another piece thrown into it and because there is a semantic argument here an intrusion prevention program prevents something from happening again that's the trick with it an intrusion prevention program first of all detects that there's a problem but it doesn't stop it it's oh my gosh i saw something bad happen it happened so it's not preventative and then it implements a prevention system to stop it from happening again. So it becomes a preventative control. But does it start as a preventative control? I guess it depends. No, it doesn't depend. An IPS needs to react to something because otherwise it's a firewall. And then it's not really an IPS, is it? So good question, JM. And I'm glad I got a chance to talk about it uh, with my face instead of typing in a 14 paragraph answer. I just don't have the fingers for it anymore. Still carpally. <laughs> no, you were not disqualified from this, David Zentera. Anybody was allowed to participate in the Total Tester online giveaway programs. This is the way. Are we doing that? We can't. Mando's not back into production yet, or at least he's not putting on release yet. And Terry said, prior winners could win today. Yeah, so I had to play it straight. Uh, if you win the practice test, does that eliminate you from voucher contest? It does not. The only thing that eliminates you from voucher contest is previous voucher wins. All right, I'm caught up on questions. Let me go see what's going on here then with, hey, we're ready to start a project at 2.54, my time. This is not going to be a long project. It is going to be a fun project. It's called SSH banners or hardening SSH with banners. And what a banner is, is the electronic equivalent of a warning sign. Now a warning sign in terms of security controls 
is a deterrent control. If I put a sign up on a door, let's make it an unlocked door that says authorized personnel only, does that stop somebody who's unauthorized from going through that door? No, the sign does not stop them from doing that. A lock does. An armed guard sitting in front of the door does. And all kinds of other physical barriers do. But signs don't stop anybody. However, they deter people. Somebody looks at that and says, this is probably not something that I ought to do. I'm, you know, I'm not a bad guy. I'm, if I need to get in there, I guess I better get permission. I better get authorization. But if I'm not authorized, that sign's there for a reason. <clears throat> Speed signs on highways. Those are deterrent controls. They're, they're warning you, don't go faster than this many kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. <laughs> what is that? Like yards? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I live for that stuff. So a speed limit sign doesn't stop you from going any faster or any slower. It just tells you there will be consequences if you choose to ignore this. Excuse me. All right, so we've got a tutorial today that I kind of borrowed from, used most of it wholesale. Uh, Andrew posted the link for it earlier in the show. I'm going to post it again right now just because I have it handy and convenient. <clears throat> and I posted that at 2.56. I know there's questions up above the uh, the stuff that I got to get to. So after the, the project, I'm going to get into that. So in Security Plus, we talk about different types of controls to help. What's the word there? Again? Oh, yeah. Duh. Make resources secure. There's all kinds of controls, administrative controls, preventative controls, compensating controls, and about six others. I mean, maybe not that many. I think there's only about six that we talk about within the objectives. And so we're looking at this deterrent control. It's an electronic warning sign that is displayed when people connect before and or after to a server with SSH. So let me stick up a, uh, a banner here that might be interesting and see what, how you would feel if you encountered this banner. That one? No, 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 no. Oh, man, I made this and I didn't create a slide out of it. What a bummer. Wow. All right, well, I'm not going to make a slide. <sighs> But let's say that you connected to an SSH server and before you even got to type in the password, you just, and, and whether or not you even put in a valid username, you get this electronic presentation. You'll see this later. I, I do have it up running on a system. It says alert, big capital letters, exclamation point. You are entering into a secured area. Your IP, login time, and username have been noted and have been sent to the server administrator. This service is restricted to, you get the idea, right? I'm not going to read all that junk to you. So that's a, a warning sign that says, you know what? If you're not authorized, you better think twice before you continue down this path. And if you're authorized, you ought to feel pretty good about yourself. It's okay. That doesn't apply to me. I'm logging in. Well, that sign is a banner. And banners, you know, you can set up a banner in your Windows computer so that uh, whenever it reboots, before you log in for the first time, the banner page pops up. It's a blue page, kind of looks like a blue screen of death with a line with a box of white text. And you can program the white text in there. Just Google that sometime, how to uh, program a banner in Windows. Uh, mine at office uh, says, message from the board, you will be assimilated. You have been assimilated. And it doesn't happen every time you log in. Only the first time you log in, after the computer is rebooted. The banners we're going to use today happen every time you connect with SSH. And there's a banner that shows up before you log in and another banner, your choice, that shows up after you can do one or the other or both. How's that for sign language, huh? Okay, got to tell you a quickie anecdote about this. 
summer between my high school and college freshman year, I was working at a, an amusement park and they had dorms there for distant employees and you could get, you know, summer work there for college students and high school students and whatever. And so I was in a, a dorm room there with a gent who, and this was coincidence. It was incredible coincidence uh, who was going to the same college that I would be attending that fall. And he was, okay, back channel. Okay. Uh, he was going to, uh, he was majoring in the same thing that I was going to major in. He was, uh, he was a physics major. And he was a junior at the time, I think, when I wasn't even a freshman. And so he gave me lots of, of info about how life works and how the physics people were and blah, blah, blah. And before we parted company, uh, I, I had a, a summer trip scheduled, you know, weekend trip to go down there for orientation or something or other. And he said, hey, well, you know, find a, a computer terminal somewhere and log in with my credentials and you can check out the computer system. <laughs> cool. And so I did, I, I, I kept his credentials and went down for my weekend. And at some point had some free time, went and found a, a, a computer lab. And I sat down, I logged in his, with his credentials and a sign in screen pop up after I log in that said, no pun files, no RDR files and no something else. And I had a heart attack. My initials are RDR. And I thought, this idiot goober had his account assigned to me. They know who I am. I'm RDR. And I was terrified. I didn't do anything. I logged out and ran away. <laughs> that was, it was not intended to be a deterrent sign. It was actually a reader file for card readers that were supposedly, you know, waiting for something. But wow, I was horrified. But I would think I would call that my first computer deterrent control that really wasn't intended to be a deterrent control all right so deterrents don't stop anybody they just make them think twice and hopefully have that second thought that says i don't think i'll do this so we're going to add our deterrent controls so remember when you're playing ssh you've got an ssh server it's a computer running a program called sshd we did ssh a couple of weeks ago welcome back back channel and then you've got a client like the Windows SSH utility, like the terminal program in Max, like Putty, uh, there's SSH in PowerShell, there's SSH in the command line environment, all those are clients. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure the banner on the server side that's running SSHD. In order for somebody to use successfully an SSH client and log into an SSH server, they need three things. They need the client, they need a valid account name and they need a valid password. Those are pretty easy to come by. Hackers spend their lives gathering account names and passwords. And obviously everybody's got four SSH clients lying around in their computer and there's plenty more. So way back when in December of 2020, we did a show on how to harden your SSH server so that that isn't a risk. We, we demonstrated how to set up a pre-done key exchange. So I'll get the secret key of the <clears throat> SSH server. It'll get my secret key. And now when we log in, they'll be encrypted and compared. And if everything matches, you log in successfully without a password. It's done by a, an encrypted key exchange. Pretty cool stuff. So that's one way that we can harden our system. And Andrew, if you would post the link to the drama feature SSH with public and private keys. That would be awesome. I didn't do a slide for that. So if you want to learn how to do that and you haven't done that in the past, we did that on uh, December, not April of, of 20, in December 18th of 2020. You can learn how to do that. So now what we're doing is we're taking that and just adding another layer of hardening. Hey, you can't get in if you don't have the right stuff. Well, what if you got the right stuff? But we just want to remind you that you ought not be here. Cool. Uh, Andrew's posted the link to that show at 303. Let's say that you're an authorized user today. Your client has the secret key. The SSH server has your secret key. And you bail. You no call, no showed today because <clears throat> you got a better job or whatever your rationale is. Uh, and the company got word of it maybe the next day. Well, all day, you're an unauthorized user getting in here. And that 
that banner didn't mean anything to you. Well, that's why we put these banners up for the people who obviously we're going to fix that. We're going to take away their secret key and we're going to change things and do whatever. But this is just that reminder that says, if you're not authorized, even if you've got the right tools, you may have lost your, your corporate permission from getting here. So we're watching you. Big Brother's watching. And these banners, you can put any text that you want. They can be fun. They can be scary. They can be just informational, anything in between. Our process today works on all Debian distros, except for the one command, because these are all a little bit different in all the distros, in how to get uh, your SSH server to restart so the new on there in just a couple of moments. All right, so let's start out with, uh, I'm going to open up a command prompt here, and I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to use the Windows SSH client today. <clears throat> Odd stuff. Okay. CMD. And now let me share that with you because you're nice people. All right, so I've just opened up your basic command prompt here. I'm gonna type in the command SSH, and I'm gonna say, log me in using the account pi at this server, 192.168.1.140. Now what's happened right at that moment is the pi got ignored, the 192.168.140 was contacted, and then the server and the client got together and they said, Let's come up with some encryption protocols. And once they've agreed on one, then the account name Pi was encrypted and sent over. And now we're doing an encrypted exchange on the password. So my password on that machine is raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Now for 8th Enter Key, what I want you to notice is whatever messages pop up as soon as I log in. So here's a bunch of stuff that came from the SSH server. This program is part of GNU Linux. And the last time anybody logged in or I log in with this account is here. And hey, you're still using the default password. You ought not do that. All right. So that's just all stuff that's built into the SSH server. It has nothing to do with banners. In order to set up banners, it's only three steps. One add banner text to this file to enable usage of the banner files. And three, if you want, add some banner text to another file for the two different kinds of banners, the pre-login and the post-login. And so procedurally, this is really simple. The first file that we care about is a file called, let me move this over a little bit so I can do some reading here, Etsy. Uh, etsy slash issue.net. Let me just ls it here. ls etsy issue.net. There it is. Now I'm going to edit that file and put my pre login warning in there. So I'm going to have it's in etsy folder. So I got to use sudo sudo nano. That's my editor etsy issue.net. Now normally, the first time you go into this file, the only thing that's here is that first line, Raspbian GNU Linux, Linux 11. I added all this stuff today. Uh, and you can copy and paste in here. You can type it in manually, whatever makes you happy. I just didn't want to do all that time-consuming stuff while I was here. So normally, this is a blank file. In fact, okay, let's do it this way. Let's see what you exactly would see. There. That's what you would normally see when you first edit that file. I'm going to close out of that real quick. And so now I've just typed all this stuff in. You save the file with control X. If I, you know, we'll make a change to it just so it'll give me a reason. Now you will add a space after there. Okay, so now I can do control X. There it is down here, control X. You want to save these changes? Yes, I do. What do you want to call the changed file? Same one I started with. Cool. All right, so now there's a banner in there, but it doesn't work yet because we have to enable usage of banners. 
In order to do that, we're going to edit another configuration file. Pseudo nano. And it's Etsy. Oops. SSH. SSH underscore config. And I'm going to do a search, control W for banner, capital B, small enter. Yeah, where'd you go? <laughs> banner not found. Why not? <laughs> Did I wipe it out? Did I lose it somehow? Oh, man. I played with this all day. I might have accidentally destroyed everything. Etsy SSH SSH config. Pseudo nano Etsy SSH SSH config. <clears throat> oh, config D. I missed something there. Hang on. I, I copied and pasted something wrong. It's not here. Standby, easy to fix. Uh, go to this page, do this, do that, touch this, this page. Right here. Oh, okay, that's what I screwed up. <clears throat> I had a typo, let me fix this in my notes. Uh, I will get this fixed in the download documents today but here's what i forgot it's not ssh config it's sshd config and if i don't fix that here in this file i will forget so stand by it was right there it is okay i just eyeballed over it never mind okay there it is now we'll do our search for banner all right and this is where it is. What you're going to see when you encounter this file, you're going to do a search for the word banner, and the only entry is going to be this one. It's got a remark in here, banner none. And what you have to do is add the line. Let's get rid of this. I just put that in there to help me find it later. You're going to add the following line, banner, capital B, followed by a path to the file that held your banner. That's what's really cool. You could make any file that you want, hold your banner text and put it anywhere you want and just call it from here. So this thing says, all right, now that this line is not marked out, it's an active and valid line. So we save that change. All done, all fixed. And does it work? Let's see. Let's exit out of this shell. And we're going to reconnect to it and see if we get that banner. No. Because if we were going to get the banner, we should have gotten it before it prompted us for our password. So what's missing? R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. The following thing is missing. If you follow the tutorial, it's going to tell you to do something. And it doesn't work in Raspberry Pi OS. It does work in other Linux distros, but not this one. There's some other steps you have to do to make it work. But let me show you what the command is that they put, that they tell you to do. They say you run etsy init.d whack sshd restart. If you run that here, it'll say sshd is not a service. So here's the command that we actually have to run in here. It's sudo service SSH restart. And when you hit the enter key on that, if you don't get any error messages, it worked. Nope, that's the problem. It's not the SSH that I wanted to restart because that would restart all the client configuration in here. It's SSHD. Doesn't hurt you to run both of these commands. The one that you have to run is the SSHD. I didn't get any error messages. So now it works. What will happen is 
all the config files for SSHD were unloaded from memory and then they were reloaded from their physical files and put in memory in the new way. So let's try this one now, exit, <clears throat> clear screen. I'm gonna log in again and I'm gonna show you two problems. First of all, I'm just gonna say log in, you, uh, make an SSH connection to 1.140. Now the problem with the Windows SSH utility is it says you're logged into Windows as DRush TX. So that's the account name that I'm gonna to use to try to log you in over there. All right, it'll fail, but I can live with it because I can illustrate a point with it. So even though I put in an invalid account name, it doesn't matter. It, it was sent over insecure securely and it's gonna get rejected no matter what password I put in here. But here it is, the text that we had in that original, oh, come here, you. Uh, Etsy file, uh, the Etsy issue.net file. So there's your alert. You're logging in, you're gonna get tracked. And if you're unauthorized, we're gonna get you. So let me put my password in here. Did I typo it? <laughs> Uh, Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Oh, no, I didn't type what. There's no account called DRush TX, so it's never going to work. So let's control C out of there. And let's do it and send it a valid password, valid account name, pi at. Okay, there's my warning banner. And now I put my password in, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And cool. I don't have another banner that happens after I've logged in yet. And that's the only last thing we got to do. There's one more file that you can edit <clears throat> and make it turn up. I'm, I'm, I did some text where I can copy and paste and show you. Oh yeah, there it is. <clears throat> All right, so the after login banner is in a file called MOTD, MOTD, and it's in the Etsy folder. So let's nano it, sudo nano, Etsy, MOTD. And this is the default text that's in there. You can clean it all out if you want. Otherwise, that's what turned up when I did log in. But I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of a warning in there. There we go. So hopefully we're going to see this next time we log in after we successfully log in. We'll save this, control X, save it, yes, to Etsy D. yep, okay, all done. And we're going to restart the service again too, just to make sure it happens. Pseudo service SSHD restart. All right, exit out of here. Oops. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm in Linux or Windows anymore. Okay, so let's do a login one final time. SSH to the server. There was the banner from INET use. It's not the right name of the file, but I'm terrible at it. My account name, Pi, was passed as secure. The waiting for a secure password, Raspberry. And there's the warning banner that we just put in, turns up after login. So this is a technique to harden. It doesn't make it secure. It doesn't guarantee nobody's gonna access it, but this is a hardening technique to add a deterrent control to our SSH server. Just give somebody reason to pause and decide, do I really wanna continue logging in or am I running a risk and I'm gonna get in trouble here? And that, here endeth the lesson. It's a three-part process. Okay, call it four. One, edit 
the file that's going to hold the banner that gets sent before you log in. So that's going to be the Etsy folder, issue.net. Next, restart the SSHD service. Pseudo service, SH, SSHD, restart. Now that's already working. <clears throat> and then finally, if we want, adds another banner text to the post login process by editing the Etsy MOTD file. All this is documented in my notes that you can download from the server today. Those notes are correct. I didn't screw it up. I thought I did. But... So we are good to go. And it's 20 minutes past the hour. We got another 40 minutes. We got a voucher giveaway to do. We got questions to catch up on. So let's do that. Uh, okay, got to get to all the right pages again. By the way, <laughs> if you're on Discord during these shows and you send me a message, good news, I've discovered that I can turn the pinger off. But it's really disconcerting. Welcome back. Other back channel. Oh, great. Uh, the link to the uh, Pi R Square server. Scott posted it again at 319. Thank you, sir. Wow, I look really fuzzy. I didn't even check that. I look good on this. So uh, the fuzz is coming through uh, YouTube, not me, because I got a really clear view on the other. All right. Nevertheless, so if you send me messages to Discord while I'm doing this, I see the, the notifications and it drives me nuts. Wait till after the show, man. <laughs> nah, don't send me anything anytime you want. I'm good with that. Okay, going over to questions. Here they are. So there was a there was at least one question or, or comment that I saw before the contest answers started coming up. So I'm going to go back a little ways here. All right, I'm going to take it back to uh, time mark 229. Somali says, uh, does CompTIA pen test enough to work as pen tester? No. And yes, I mean, it depends on what an employer wants. There are employers who say, I want entry-level people who know the jargon, know the concepts, and we're going to teach them everything that we need to know. So yeah, that's a, an entry-level pen test position. And for somebody who's looking to hire a senior pen tester who can operate independently and successfully on very complicated projects, no. So what you do is you hunt the job sites for people who are looking for uh, employees that are credentialed pen test plus or are becoming credentialed. And you know, don't be afraid to apply if you don't have the, the credentials, but you're working on it and apply. Maybe something will happen out of that. I know somebody uh, who applied to a company the other day. They were just telling me about this over the last, the, the saga continues uh, to even this morning, I got a, an update on it. They applied to a company that wants them to be an expert in something that they have almost zero experience in. But there were 13 other uh, criteria that this person has a good deal of experience in and said, you know what, if I'm, I'm just missing the one main thing out of 14, maybe they'll call me, maybe we'll interview and we'll see what they can do to help me learn their product. And I've got the other stuff that they want, or maybe, you know, we'll just talk and say, you know, it's not quite working out, So, but it's an opportunity. And so they sent an application in and a couple of days later, they got an email from the company that says, we're going to call you to schedule a pre-interview. We are interested enough in what you have that we think it's worth talking to. And then I got the, the, the notification from them this morning that they received the call today and that they are, they've been scheduled an interview early next week. So we'll see what happens and try it, right? You got nothing to lose. Alex turned up. Hope you're still here, Alex. Good to see you, and I'll see you on Discord. Patricia Grace is here, lurking from work. I love that you're working. Uh, Darius Bryant's here. Hey, everyone. Our Russian site is back. Uh, at 231, Banhammers, would you get rid of that? And since it says dot .site, I am taking that on faith that it's uh, untoward. 
and does not belong here. Uh, 232 JM, I'm trying to understand what reverse engineering is. There a simple example of reverse engineering in software that you know of, not a specific one. Uh, reverse engineering says, I'm going to duplicate a piece of software. Let's say it's code with 10 lines and I know what the software accomplishes. I've, I've, I've used it before, but I don't know how it's coded. So I need somebody or somebody's who can look at the code, but I can't. It's not legal. I can't copy code. And if I remember even a little bit of it, that's no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the first line of my code. And I'm going to send a, a question, a yes or no question to the person or people who can see the code and said, does the first line of code uh, do some kind of a greeting? Yes or no. And when we get that back, okay, now I'm going down the wrong path. And you have to ask a whole bunch of yes, no questions to the viewing team to build your product. And eventually you ask enough yes, no questions that you can create. It takes time. It takes people, uh, but you can recreate identically and in a way that you can't get sued. The same stuff. And this works for engineering physical projects, engineering software. That's what it is. You start by coding, but you can never, ever, ever look at the original code, at least until you're done, because that becomes plagiarism, and copyright violations, and all kinds of other things. <laughs> crypto Inu is here. Nice to see you, man. <laughs> Hope your crypto is doing well. Jan's using Kali. Okay. That works for today's stuff. Uh, that's a the bones of it are mostly Debian. Uh, everything I did today should work just fine in there because they use SSHD. How you reinitialize the surface is a little different in Cali, but everything else goes great. Just Google whatever distro you're using. If, if the uh, restart service commands that I showed you here don't work today, just do quick research. How to restart service in my distro, Ubuntu or Mint or <laughs> Cali, whatever you got, you'll find... 5,000 articles that show you the one command that you need to run. <clears throat> Reading questions here, passing 240. I got to run to the store to get vape juice. <clears throat> Doesn't Uber deliver that stuff? Heck, you're on an island full of vape, man. You got kill away a vape. Excited to see what the JWST is showing. It's, it's fun and it's interesting. All right. Mr. Myers says you're welcome, JM, at 242, but he ain't here. So I say you're welcome. <laughs> all right. Then we came all the answers for the quiz. I'm rolling past that. And we talked about JM's question to 249. <laughs> Tell it. 251. I'm putting that okay. We had we covered that stuff. Covered that stuff. All right. I think we pick up new here at about 255. Jam, maybe a man trap. Uh, man trap doesn't exist as a term anymore in CompTIA. S something vestibule. Screened vestibule. No, it's not screened. Screened is for DMZ. Nonetheless, we know what man traps are. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Man trap is potentially a preventative control. Sure. I super scold. I got to go find it. Hang on. It's 255. There we go. Uh, you think a man trap could help deter? Yeah, I suppose in theory it could, but that's not its primary job. People don't go by and say, I'm going to go into this building. Oh, rats, they've got a man trap there. I don't think I will. That's not the intent of a man trap. Uh, the intent is to trap you there until you are approved for access. But yeah, I suppose it could have a deterrent impact. Andre, I have to miss drama. Okay. Access control vestibule. Scott nails it as ever. One of these days, I'll actually commit that one to memory. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of mic mode on that one and DMZ, the screened perimeter network. Yeah, I think I got that one right. Uh, so the difference is I'm actually going to learn what they mean and what they're supposed to stand for. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Ukrainian Christmas over at Andre's place. He's got a couple of uh, Ukrainian nationals who live there. Screen subnet. All right. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> 
<laughs> State of your circus is here. Andre isn't in and out. I think Try Hack Me does something similar when using SSH. Okay. Yeah, they do a lot of things, right? And there's there's a lot of things you can do to harden SSH. We've talked about two now in the last year and a half. Uh, and I'm debating how much further I want to go into that. There's good stuff. Andrew posted at 303 the link to the uh, uh, secret keys exchange for SSH. 313, what's the link of the file server so I can see the instructions so that I can do this project later? That got posted by Scott at 319 JM. And you thanked him, so you knew. Kevin Lopez is here, 321, recent passer of Cloud Plus. Was it Cloud Plus? or did, No, you missed Cloud Plus, but you got the other one, which was harder. I don't remember which one, but it was one of the security-oriented ones. I apologize for forgetting. Uh, this is uh, lots of back and forth conversations between each other. Andrew won't be on Discord either. He's got a VR headset the day before I got COVID. <laughs> so I'm just going to live in COVID land. Worst thing they can say is no, but you can always get some experience with interviews. Exactly right. Kevin got it too. My body aches. My throat hurts. My ache. I had a lower back ache. It's still a little bit there, but man, for two nights, sleep was impossible. I started sucking down eight acetaminophens a day, two about every four hours or something. It was nuts. Middle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Master 19. Uh, Joey Quetzal is here. David Mueller. I get so much anxiety during interviews. Once I'm hired, my skills show and shine, but during the interview, I feel like a scrub and I talk like I have too many muffins in my mouth. You're not the only one. Yeah, downing emergency. Sure, lots of water. I hope you, you recover quickly. Everybody's going to get this one, I think. Funny thing, we even have a word, vog. Sure, volcano fog, lots of water and, oops. Travels from island to island, huh? Causes allergy-like symptoms, even in those without allergies. Interesting. Server Plus, that's what you got. Right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you, you've got some enough background, regular day-to-day -day knowledge that you can pass certain tests. Everything that I've learned so far as I study Linux Plus, uh, I would be able to pass. I missed a couple here and there, but, but I, there are heavy duty or things coming up down line that I know that I don't know. And those are the ones that would kill me. And I'll tell you what, I, I have I've learned a few things about stuff that I use day to day that I didn't know in the past that has solved problems. It's added cool tools and techniques to my life. Uh, I just started uh, lesson six out of 24. I think I'm a five hours or so into 17 hours worth of lesson. And man, I, besides the fact that the, the presentation is awful, honestly, to do 30 minutes of presentation, the other night it took me three hours because every time he screwed up, he doesn't fix it. He doesn't explain it. He just goes on like nothing happened. And then I have to stop and I have to go research and learn what he was supposed to have taught there. It's killing me, but I'm learning it and I'm getting it from all kinds of different angles. So Man, I'm getting good stuff, ultimately, one way or the other. Okay, hey, well, we're caught up on there. It's 33. I'm feeling like another giveaway. This is going to be a similar giveaway to the, the ones that we've done in the past, but with a slightly new twist. On Path Attack. That's the third, right? That's our three big changes back channel. If you are used to three phrases that have existed since the beginning of security, beginning with the end of life of 501, sorry, I'm hiccuping, and with full 601 and with new net plus and some other stuff coming out, they've changed the terms of three different phrases. And so we no longer have man traps. We have access veg vegetable control, access control vestibule. We no longer have DMZs, demilitarized zones. We now have screen subnets, and we no longer have man in the middle attacks. 
we now have on path attacks. So get used to them. Be like me for a while. Don't remember them, but sooner or later, they're going to be part of your daily lexicon as security and network and computer PC professionals. All right, let me go over and dig up my contest notes. Guys in the back channel, those were the first notes that I posted on the, uh, the stuff before we started the show today. We're going to do a contest for a CompTIA exam voucher. This voucher is good for any CompTIA exam, possible exception of CYSA+, anywhere in the world that CompTIA exams are offered. And that includes doing them from at home in your part of the world. If they're offered in your country, then you can do these at home. You can do them at a Pearson View or other partner testing center. It's good stuff. If you win, you're going to send me an email that has some information that I'll show you after the contest. Andrew and or Scott will have that all copied and pasted and ready to print in the YouTube feed. When I get your information, it's got to be exactly in everything that we specify in there. I will forward that to CompTIA. CompTIA will take it along with the other winners list from this week. And they're out of the office for the last three weeks. And so when they get back in the office next week, they got a lot of their own regular work to catch up on before they're going to get caught up on our little contest here. But they'll get to it and you will receive a voucher. <coughs> Excuse me, code. Oh, I'm sorry. That was one I've been waiting for all day. <coughs> And you'll be able to use that to sign up for your test and that will pay for these are right. I mean, you can buy the cheapest test out there, which is probably something like ITF plus at 179 bucks or whatever, or there's $400 exams. The, uh, the price for Linux plus exam is $388 right now. So it's a nice voucher. It's a heck of a prize. And these aren't from us. These came from CompTIA. They've, they're allowing us to distribute them to you on their behalf. So many thanks to CompTIA for all this stuff. Let me know, uh, anybody, if you cannot hear me. Let me know if you can hear me, because one of our back channel people is not hearing. <clears throat> Scott, let Andrew know if you can hear him. Okay, good. I got sound. <laughs> all right, contest rules for today's contest. No previous winners of vouchers. If you've won any other contest, <clears throat> then you're good to go. Thank you, Scott. Uh, we try to make this as fair as we can. People who have not won before get the first chances at it. And I know we've got lots of people here today <clears throat> who haven't won. So, Winner that I see first, uh, that Scott sees first in his feed. He knows the right answer to today's question. He's going to select the winner out of that. And then he's going to check with me and I'm going to look it up and make sure it's not a, uh, in the previous winner's list. And then we're going to announce you and put up the email, the post that shows what you need to send. All right. It's going to be another random number contest. I used a random number generator program today. If you want to look it up, you can use it yourself. It's randomnumbergenerator.com. And the range today is between 10,000 and 20,000 inclusive. So your answer needs five digits in it, folks. And you can post five guesses, not on the same line. You have to do five different postings. <sighs> so that's it. Give me a guess. Random number between 10,000 and 20,000. Closest to without going over wins. Yes, without going over back channel. <clears throat> All right, let me switch over to the feed and watch numbers go by. I know that makes it hard, doesn't it, Scott? <laughs> Five digits, I got to figure out from that. So, <clears throat> but we know we can eliminate certain numbers easily. No winners yet. Oh, okay. There is a potential winner. <clears throat> I see one. Now we got to figure out who's closest. Oh man, I got lots of numbers coming in now. Let me scroll, scroll, scroll. All right, that one is so far the closest. <sighs> what was that? That was that. 
reading numbers here, watching them scroll by. Okay, here's a one that's closer. <clears throat> oh man, did I super scroll? Sure I did. There it is, okay. <laughs> There's some interesting numbers in here. TC1624, is that between 10,000 and 20,000? 1950 Linden Wynn needs to be higher than 10,000 and lower than 20,000. <sighs> Not calling it out. Linda, higher numbers. <laughs> Okay, so people throwing in numbers. <clears throat> All right. Another 20 seconds or so. We do have numbers that have met the criteria. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to put a, a name in the back channel here and see if Scott agrees with me on the so far. And then I'm going to look up my winner list on that name. Give me a second here. Go to the top of the page. <clears throat> okay, I show that as a valid potential winner. Okay, I got agreement on the back channel. Let me go here to my... Oh, wow. Did I go to the right place right off the bat? Today is the 7th. <clears throat> All right, let me go and I'm almost there. I know I'm, I apologize. I'm not trying to drag this out on purpose, but because I picked up this job of managing the winners, I got to do some extra stuff. Oh, really? All right, let me look that up, uh, Scott. Man, we had a winner all picked out, but the 20 seconds, I figured there wouldn't be a, a better number in the last 20 seconds. However, <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay. Wait a minute. I've, I've got the wrong person. Let me, I don't have to double check. I, the back channel is responsible for, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay, Scott, what's the, what's the, the final verdict on that? I see you got two with two numbers. I don't know who came. Well, no, I guess the, the I see it. Okay. Hang on, I got to change the paperwork here. <laughs> that does not show up anywhere in my feed. How is that not possible? Oh, there it is. Wow. Okay, we're going to close it off. We do have a winner, and it's a different winner than I was originally shooting for. I know that I've never heard that name before. So, <sighs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's not all about first guess. You got five guesses, and of them, one of them got to be closer. Hang on, got to fix some minor thing here. And there we go, save that file. Oh, wow, all right. We have a final. And it happened at the very end on this person's fifth guess. That's incredible. Uh, sorry, some of you guys were really close, way up and then uh, how to at 341 snuck in the winning number was <laughs> heck I lost it 11575 something like that let me <laughs> and I, there's my page number it was yeah 11775 was the random number that got generated closest to was how to at 341 with 11500 Andrew or Scott if you would post a uh, how to claim your prize on the YouTube feed. I'll put the slide up for it and we'll go through that. Voucher winner, there we go. So how to, in order to claim your prize, look at the instructions that are being posted at about 344. And in the meantime, I'm gonna put the slide up of it. There you go, Andrew just posted that for you at 344, I was right. You're going to send me an email. What the heck just happened? Oh, a whole bunch of stuff. Sorry. <clears throat> Hang on. My system is doing creative things. 
I must recreate. There we go. All right. You're going to send an email to me, Dave R at totalsem.com. You're going to identify yourself with your YouTube name that you use to win this voucher. You're going to give me your real name that's going to get registered with CompTIA. I need your email address and it must be in the body of the email, not in the header. I'm not, I can't pull it out of there. Let me know exactly which exam you want to take, not by name. If you put A plus in there, I don't know if that's 220-1001 or 220-102. There's two versions of network plus. So I need the number N10-008 or N10-007 or 220. You don't get the idea, right? I need the numeric exam number. Let me know what country you're going to be in when you take the exam. And if the country is the US, you must include the state where you're going to take your exam. That's everything that I need. Get that to me today. And I will send all of this week's winners and, uh, and also of the other uh, prize winnings today to the appropriate people when they get in their offices next week. I imagine they'll get started on things. There may be delayed though, <clears throat> before you hear from CompTIA because they've got a good backlog of their own work. And they got a good backlog of, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, uh, all the winners that I've sent them in the last month, <laughs> something like that. So congratulations, how to, what a good name. All right, so what are the questions we got that have popped up here? Oh, good Lord. We're going to do trains. No, man, if it's a train leaves Chicago at 1115 and a 21 speed bicycle with one flat tire leaves Anaheim. Boy, <laughs> all the names came in that haven't said a word for the whole show during that. <laughs> nice to see you all suddenly. That's all right. Looking for the end of all those things. <laughs> Tell it, you gotta have parsecs in there somewhere, bud. I'm gonna travel. I'm, <laughs> I made the run in two parsecs. Joey Quetzal, the answer is A. <laughs> All right, that gets me caught up. Good going. How to, how to. Congratulations, everybody. Congrats. You're very welcome. Though so with David Miller, trains are the real transit is not transit. That's what you use for surveying. Oh, the rail. <laughs> What are you guys talking about? I missed the front end of that. <laughs> All right. I'm caught up on questions. I am caught up on contesty stuff. So if you got any questions, this is the time to finish them up. We got 13 minutes of show left. If questions dry up, my voice is certainly dried up. <clears throat> Wipe that one out. Uh, back channel at 347. Thank you. I don't have to tell you to do that. I, got, I have my own band hammer. Watch this. Ah, uh, you beat me to it. <laughs> oh, great. Nice to see Nubian Queen here. Sorry, I missed your answer. Uh, my aunt, the, the, the generated number was 11775. If that's the, the question that you're asking, closest to that we saw on the list was 115, 11,500. So only off by 225. Pretty good out of a, a range of 10,000 numbers, right? Okay, lots of intercommunications here. Peter, I had you at the beginning, uh, I had all, all the way almost up until the very end, and then you got sniped by how to another time. Keep trying. We Mike does one of these for each of his show. I do one for my show. And now we all do uh, total tester on lines for all of our shows. Oh, is there another Nubian queen question there? Okay. All right. Let me find that. Okay. Yeah, there it is. So 347. Nubian Queen asks, Dave, could you let me know what are the advantages of using Raspberry? I understand Python is underlying software. Is that correct? <clears throat> okay. Um, no. Python is not the underlying software. 
it is an operating system that is optimized to run programs that are written in Python. However, it'll run anything. It just, it's just, it's friendliest to Python. So what's the benefit of a Raspberry Pi? Well, if I throw this out in the open, if Scott were on the air with me today, his first answer would be price. And he would be dead right, of course. This isn't a Raspberry Pi, but it looks kind of like one from a distance. So it's a computer about that big, about the size of a credit card, fits into here. And they run in price from $5 for their super micro, super ultra cheapo model up to $80. The stock model, uh, the, the big two popular ones are $35 and $45. They're tough to get right now. Uh, shortages and delivery issues like everything all over the world. So if you want a new one, uh, you could overpay for one from the, snipe, uh, the, the, the snipers and the scalpers out there. But uh, just go to a, a distributor, go to a Go to raspberrypi.com and look for buy a pie. And then they will have at the bottom of that page or a link on that page, all of the distributors all over the world that carry them. And they sell them at the list price. They don't jack up the price on them. And most of them are out of stock. There's a few that do have stock, but pre-order now so you can get one the next time they get stock. I've got two on order that are coming in at the end of February. And I have one on order that's coming in at the end of May. So you get this little breadboard computer. It's a full bone computer. It does everything that your Mac does. It does everything that your PC does with a couple of differences. It's not as fast. It doesn't have as much RAM. They come with one gig and two gigs and four gigs and eight gigs, and that's it. It's hard coded onto the motherboard. And of course, its primary operating system is Linux. There's zillions of different Linux distros that run on these. So. What is the benefit of using them? To learn, to have fun, to turn them into tools. You can learn any programming language that you want on this box. So if you wanna learn Python, you wanna practice Python uh, or C++ or SCADA, uh, SCABA or you know, any of the, the myriad bazillions of language, Net Plus framework is supported on there. So there, and if you just want to run programs, that, that makes you happy. There's millions of them that will run on here from games to utilities, to uh, office productivity tools, to wacky niche stuff. I've got programs that listen to airplanes going over my head and send that information to FlightAware. And of course, all the, the, the hundreds and thousands of projects that we do on here, we've done 75 different projects, give or take, just in this show and in the last year and a half alone and the, the hundreds of thousands of more of them that are out there you can run your christmas tree lights on this thing you can uh, dj with it there's just a, a tremendous number of things so uh, we use them in this course as a tool for helping study for comp tia certifications so let's say for interest instance you need to learn some ssh commands or some command line utilities in order to prep for the A plus core two exam. You got Linux right here. You spent 35 bucks, a couple extra bucks for a case and a power supply and a micro SD card. Okay, you're in for 50, 55 bucks. And now you got a full blown Linux machine. You can learn everything that you need to for CompTIA and practice it on these. And then you can do that for the stuff you need to do on network plus. And there's all kinds of networking things and features and controls that you can do in here. And same thing, there's security features like hardening an SSH server in Security Plus. So we turn these into servers and utilities to allow us to enhance our studies. I, I, look, I could go on. I got a two hour show on the 47 shows to answer this question. It's great, it's because they're cool, it's because they're cheap and they let us learn a lot, a lot of things and they let us do a lot of really cool projects. Uh, yeah, let me give you the one project in here. A lot of people who are in these forums and myself and Mike Myers, and I don't know if Scott's got one up and running yet. Uh, I got a box like this running upstairs, sitting next to my router, my, my cable modem. It blocks advertising on every website that I go to between this and between the, the, uh, the browser that I use. I use the Brave browser. I don't get ads. I get no ads 
on almost any site that I go, anytime, anywhere. Episode on how you could set up a pie hole in your system. I can do it in an episode that takes 40 minutes to do a project. You can do this in 40 minutes and have yourself a pie hole and never see an advertisement on any computer in your house again. <clears throat> or you can change that around and I want ads on this machine for some twisted reason. <laughs> All right, hope that helps. And I can fill that more in uh, on Discord. I know you're on Discord. Uh, so, okay, there it is. Good, we got a few more questions. We got five more minutes. I'll pick out some uh, top of the line questions and then we'll close things down here. Goodness. <laughs> Just reading some of your comments that don't need to be responded. How do I use SSH to copy one text file form from one Linux machine to another Linux machine? Yes, the, S the SCP command is the way to go. Um, I'm going to type in a quick SCP command here. SCP source. And so if you're, you're using uh, the computer that is the source, you would do like a source path. Let's say SCP WAC Etsy WAC file.txt. And then destination. The destination is going to be an account name on some other or a host and at its IP address, 192.168.1.35, colon, and then a path to where you want to save it. So maybe I want to save it to WAC home, WAC pie, WAC documents. And sometimes you have to add the dot, the slash dot. Sometimes you don't. Uh, and then as soon as you hit the enter key on this, it's going to try to log in over to dot 35 using the pie account. It's going to prompt you for an account name. And then the file copy will happen. And this gets really fun. You can do all the files in the Etsy folder. Wildcards are supported here. Star.star, star, star dot text. Get the idea? So if that doesn't fix it for you, let me know on uh, Discord and we will get you working. <clears throat> Do I mess around with ESP32 boards? No, I have played a little bit with Arduino, but I'm using editor product to that, the RP2040. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with ESP. There's got more support for it right now, but... I'm trying to help push the 2040s. Yes, your question was about Raspberry. Okay, am I getting to the end here? Eight gigs is pretty good unless you're doing some heavy lifting. Yeah, eight gigs is darn good. Is Linux command line on Raspberry Pi faster than GUI? Absolutely. There's no overhead. You're just talking straight to the OS. <clears throat> now, how much faster? If you got a fast machine, it's not really noticeable, right? But there are things that you can do on the command line that you will never be able to accomplish from the GUI, at least not in one step. Getting to the very end of it here. You definitely have to grab a pie. Joe, we have uh, thanks. Uh, wondering if the Raspberry Pi CLI is slower than other full PC. CLIs work about the same speed. It's a question of does the program that you're running run as fast on another computer? That'll vary. All right. Any last important questions here? Pi is going to do this. Pi's, okay. We're kind of wound up here. It's 58, 58, 50, right? So let's wind things up. Uh, I'm going to be on Discord channel after this. Ah, excuse me, I'm taking about five minutes or so to answer the questions on the forums that I moderate. And then I'll join up over with Mike and camera and we'll have some fun. I'm not going to be on there very long. My voice, as you can tell, is still just useless. But what's going on there? Oh, yeah, I got to go these check these notes here. Upcoming stuff. Uh, we're going to do Nessus 10 probably in February. I got a lot of, of cool things lined up to do, but I haven't put them in order, the itinerary. So 
uh, we'll find out what I'm going to do on, uh, on Friday on Friday. Mike's show on Monday. He does have a feature announced. He's going to do part two of static routing. And if that goes quickly, he's going to start dynamic routing. And if not, he'll uh, complete static routing on Monday. And then on his Wednesday show, pick it up with dynamic routing. If you're looking at Network Plus, you want to get your fingers in this pie. And if you didn't watch his Wednesday show when he started part one, watch the Wednesday show, get that stuff under your belt uh, to make part two a lot more enjoyable, right? All right, we're going to wind things up then. Thank you very much, Mike, Scott, excuse me, Andrew, the whole crew, everybody who comes here to participate. I am Dave Rush. I am the senior instructor at Total Seminars and resident pie specialist. I'm wishing you a great weekend. Take care of each other. Take serious steps to stay healthy. Call, visit your parents and your family. And never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resources we have are you and I. And so with that, I'll bid you good night. I'll see you on Discord and at the AMA next week. Oh, man, something terrible almost happened. Something terrible is happening. <laughs> I got so screwed here. There we go. <laughs> I'll see you on Discord. I'll see you at the AMAs next week. Oh, man, I got a note in here that says, Happy New Year. I forgot to wish everybody uh, a happy 2022 since we've started that. So see you on Discord. Until then, I am out of here.